Dear ladies and gentlemen, friends of the Wilfred Martin Center, welcome to a new, the ninth episode of Thinking Talks. My name is Peter Hiefel, I'm the policy director of the Martin Center. Recently, the specters of a new banking crisis of the 27-28 are back with the failure and collapse of the Silicon Valley banking, the fear of contagion into the European business and banking system, and of course, the UBS and the Swiss story in the recent days. In addition to that, rising inflation, debt, and the specters of war in Ukraine have added to this problem. For these challenges, the European Union is very much in the driver's seat in reacting and maintaining stability and reopen options, of course, for economic recovery and growth. Against the background, I'm very delighted to have with me Ludwig Niedermeyer, member of the European Parliament for the European People's Party and vice chair of the Committee for Economic and Monetary Affairs. Before his career, he worked also in the private banking sector in his home country in the Czech Republic. So Niedermeyer, a very warm welcome to the Martin Center. We are very delighted to have you with us. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here again. Well, one can hardly imagine that more busy times uh, in these days. You just mentioned that you met Madame Lagarde on Monday. And so tell us a bit more about the topics you're currently dealing with uh, in the European Parliament and in particular and foremost in your role as the vice chair of the committee. Uh, obviously, as you know, uh, the, the members of parliaments have their individual assignment, like, like the files. And just now, actually, I'm at the end of negotiation of anti-money laundering, uh, part of anti-money laundering package. Uh, I'm uh, the co-reporter of uh, anti-money laundering directive that I consider as a very important uh, piece of uh, legislation. I have been working for that for many, many months. We are now close to the committee fold, so please keep uh, the fingers crossed for us. I also, and this is kind of a small but very interesting job, uh, that is not so much like debated between the politicians and economics economists. Uh, the Commission has came with few initiatives concerning the, the modernization of taxation regime. One of them is so-called Debra that would allow the firms to get some tax allowance for increase of capital. I am a reporter of that. Uh, unfortunately, the Parliament uh, that is not here the driving seat because this is unanimity vote in the Council. And the council is very un enthusiastic about that, but I am trying to negotiate the support for this proposal in Parliament. That happens to be more complicated than I would uh, expect. But as you as you rightly start, uh, we are again facing uh, difficult circumstances. So obviously, uh, not only as a vice chair of the uh, of the Econ, but also because I consider economic topics to be my main uh, main uh, main field. Uh, in the in the European Parliament, I'm trying to keep track of everything what's going on. So a few weeks ago, this was that Industry Zero plan that is very important for future of European economy. Before that, obviously, state aid that is also related uh, to that. I just came from another debate on the state aid uh, in in European Parliament is under under competition working group. Uh, and now in recent days, obviously, there are concerns about the bank. So it's good to be on the track. And we were very fortunate to have just in, in, in these days at the debate, uh, both with uh, Madame Lagarde, uh, with Mr. Andrea. So I guess we are, we are quite informed now. Well, after the financial crisis and the banking crisis in the aftermath of 27, uh, the European regulators did quite a lot to, to prevent these ha things happening again, to stabilize, to set up new types of regulations. Now the collapse, I mentioned that of the Silicon Valley banning, the, the shock waves sent through the European banking system as well, have an, now again raised doubts whether this is a stable system, whether the authorities uh, and supervising boards are able to manage. So far, I think we are quite well. But do you think, are we really better doing now in Europe after 15 years? And in addition uh, to that, the ECB's uh, raising interest rate, is this the right thing to do right now if we have looming uh, economic burdens and crisis ahead of us? A lot of questions, but let me start with something that I guess should be really on uh, uh, set at first. Inflation is really bad evil, and we have to deal with inflation. We have to tackle inflation because inflation is hurting everyone. It's hurting mostly 
those that, that the most vulnerable people with low income and so on. So that's why, without any doubts, we should support ECB in effort to do the right steps. And I guess after some hesitation, when we have lost a little bit of time, ECB is on track. And I am very grateful for ECB being very clear about what's the goal. The goal is to get inflation under control. So let's put it on side. In the banks, uh, I guess, you know, uh, never say never. <laughs> uh, we are just managing risks. Uh, the supervisors, and I have been in the central bank for many years, so I have my own painful experience from the past. So we are trying to do just the better. And I guess uh, here we should be proud of what we did. Uh, so first of all, I, I guess that Europe is the most loyal to, to very carefully designed the global system of the rules for the banks that are created under Basel umbrella. And I'm very grateful, grateful for that. In Europe, we together some concept that I consider to be very, very important. And this is the banking union. And uh, now I believe uh, we will be a little bit like paid back. Uh, so after first shock um, uh, associated to Credit Suisse, I guess people start to understand what is the difference between the regulation of the of the banks in Europe and what is uh, how is the situation in Switzerland. In, in case of Silicon Valley Bank, for example, this was the bank because Americans have decided that the Basel concept will not be introduced for all banks, but only for very big banks. So I guess that uh, in Europe, just a hypothesis, the bank like the Silicon Valley would be under under uh, more stringent scrutiny. Uh, I couldn't say that this was a wrong concept, but this was concept that was uh, that was uh, that was risky. So I guess at the starting point uh, we are uh, we are in much better shape, uh, not only compared to past, but also compared to the others. At the same time, it should be said that the conditions for financial industry is challenging. We went through the uh, COVID crisis. We went through the uh, energy crisis. That both were shocks to real economy, and plus the banks uh, are facing the financing shock. I was warning always when we had in Parliament discussion, for example, of fiscal policy, and my friends from let's say more left uh, the left side of the spectrum said, you know, why to be so concerned about the government debt because the rates are interest rates are almost zero, so it costs nothing. And I always said, you know, maybe in in a few years, there will be difference. The difference came in a few months. And this is not only shock for the government, it is shock for the financial industry. Because the, uh, the, uh, the very long period of extremely low interest rate and yields were leading to any effort to enhance uh, the, the return. One of the options is to invest in long-term fixed, co- fixed income assets. But this, I would say, almost unprecedented increase of long-term interest rate, the value of these assets went down. And when the banks like the Silicon Valley banks has got under liquidity a strain and had to liquidate some of these holdings, they liquidate them uh, in, in very big loss and this started spiral of the, of the lack of uh, confidence. So we should not underestimate that the fact that we are moving from low, very low interest rate environmental to higher interest rate environmental, that it on first sight it creates some profits, but also a substantial, substantial risk. So that's why actually I'm very grateful that it's have been many months ago when, when the European regulator warned banks that there, there are risks um, on the site and they should be ready for that. So we do, <clears throat> I guess they do very good job in trying to manage it, but uh, <laughs> never say never. You mentioned a couple of projects you are also on in the industrial sector, industrial policy. Next to the war in Ukraine, of course, this ongoing project of the green transformation is probably Europe's most ambitious one. Um, to what extent do you think is the current set of economic policies suited to this transformation, which will last and there's no way back, I think? Uh, the transformation is demanding, uh, but it would be even more demanding if we don't do it and we, we let uh, the climate and the planet changed, uh, this would affect everyone. So I guess I'm, I'm very glad that Europe was early adopter of this uh, trajectory. And it's great to see that uh, that other countries, not only from West, but uh, countries like China are on the track again. We are now at a situation that we are getting from kind of uh, relatively abstract political commitments to more real stuff. And this is more difficult. 
which includes certain instruments probably to adjust it as well. Exactly. So, you know, the, the great thing is that some investments make sense not only because they are green, but because they are effective. Like, for example, you can't produce electricity cheaper than through through solar panel and wind farms. So here, kind of moderate support, uh, obviously improvement of the grid to make sure that they can be connected and they can be connected very quickly. This is the role of the governments. In some other fields, uh, it's more difficult, for example, if you are talking about the industry. But, but we should not forget that the main assumption how we help the economy uh, to adjust was to set the clear rules in advance and make them stable because the companies they are investing all the times but they have to uh, they have to decide what is the good investment and what is the wrong one the fact that we set the target we set the measures how to get to the target this is the main contribution for the businesses to make the right decision and this is what we did and it seems to me be forgotten Now we are in, different, in a little bit different stage because uh, the, for, for many people, the move uh, taken by the American administration the, through that anti-inflation act, that is actually rather green act, uh, was surprising because many people said, you know, look, what you are doing in Europe, it's nonsense because no one is following. Overnight, we have got into the situation that we are afraid that Americans will do much better in, in decarbonization than me. That's kind of, uh, kind of interesting to note, but... But uh, I'm not the one who believes that uh, economy should be run by government money, should be run by the regulation, should be run by the state aid. But at the same time, we must reflect the reality of the others. So that's why I'm... Marcus forces to... No, sure. And the money, the money, the business cases, uh, the, what, what motivates people to invest. So that's why I'm grateful that commission put, uh, put something together. Uh, I mean, industry zero, the relaxation of state aid rules. And I guess we need a quick, quick, but a competent policy, a poli a political discussion to consider if the if we have right balance of kind of state support and the risk that we will we will hurt the, the, the level playing field and the market competition. But this discussion is very timely. We should be quick. And I guess the first steps are on the table and they are not the bad ones. You mentioned the topic of China, and this is my last question. Um, during your or the Czech presidency, a lot of attention was focusing. I was very impressed also when I had been to the Czech Republic, how much effort had been done to cope with China, the rise of China to repulse certain things, uh, not least, for example, the matter of Taiwan. And as a result, you get the hit also from the Chinese. I've been very belligerent. How do you read the current situation uh, in China and what is the perception in your home country? Is Europe again digging its head into the soil if it comes to the challenges on the other side of the globe? Uh, I guess uh, just as we speak, uh, the big delegation of not only Czech businesses by headed by the by the president of lower house is on the way to Taiwan. So this says what is the Czech position vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, vis -vis Taiwan. And uh, obviously, it's now too, uh, too late to say that uh, we, as the Western democracies, we made a mistake, that we just uh, supported China so well in their economic transformation that I, I, I would say was in many areas very successful, but we paid the price because very often the European policy was driven by short-term interest of the corporation or, or lobbyist lobbyists that get us on right on wrong track. I guess in the last few years we understood, but now we should understand that the position of China has changed. They have more self-confidence, they have more, more market power, but we should not give up. We must go back to something that is right long-term policy. Uh, obviously, uh, the China is now a very important part of the global economy, but we should build, uh, build uh, our in, I would say, not independence, but our better resistance towards the risk of disruption of the trade flows between uh, countries that are not democratic, that are not on the same value side as, as we are. And I, I hope there is no more understanding of that across uh, the EU. Obviously, this will be always tested by concrete decisions. The concrete decisions can be opposed by, by concrete groups, but we should finally get on the on the right track and I guess uh, countries like Czech Republic can help. 
So Nirvay, thank you so much for being with us today and giving us a lot of insights into the current economic and fiscal and banking issues and the role, of course, of the European Parliament and you as a member of the Parliament. These topics, might it be the banking crisis, might it be China will keep us busy and this is topics for further events here at the Martin Center. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us today uh, with this new episode of Thinking Talks. We have a lot of information available also on, on our webpage. It's www.martincentered.eu and on YouTube. I hope to be back with you. Thank you very much.